Hi everybody, my name is Marius um, and I quickly want to do a quick video with you like the other videos as well. Uh, I want to talk about uh, very quickly, <clears throat> sorry, um, just to show you basically a quick video of how to connect to a virtual services router with Putty. Okay, and the reason we want to do that is um, you'll know that historically, and this is what this video uh, covers, is we used to having a router, all right, uh, with a PC, and you'd have some type of serial connection to it, which is on this side, a COM port, let's say COM port 1, whatever the case may be, and this would be a serial connection, yeah, to the router. The cool thing about that, of course, is if the router reboots, you can actually see the output on the actual PC, and on the PC itself, we'll run something like a putty, yeah, and uh, so this could have actually zero configuration through the console port. I could actually see all of that information and do the initial configuration of the router itself. Right, so um, what the video does not cover, all right, uh, very importantly is the settings required for PuTTY, right, at 9600, and of course the stop bits and everything else. I'm not going to go into that detail. Okay, we all should know that by now. All right, so um, we've got other videos on that to cover that. This is more a case of how do I get PuTTY in a virtual environment, because it's virtual, to talk to an actual virtual router, so it looks like this environment. Right, even though it's one PC. That's what I want to do. Like I said, uh, what products I've covered at the moment is I'm actually using PuTTY. Very important. And the reason I use PuTTY, it's a freeway. We all know it's freeway. All right, and if you've been around the CLI block a couple of times and you use CLI, you obviously know what PuTTY is all about. Right, that's the first thing. I don't know all the other software out there. I'm not too bothered about them. I just want to give you a baseline with PuTTY. The second thing is we'll use a VSR, a virtual services router. It's a virtual router on top of an actual PC inside a VM. Okay, and we'll use that specifically. And that's the reason for this video is to show you how you can create this environment in a VM. Yep. Okay, so I'll also do a bit of a demonstration for you as well. But just very quickly, what I want to discuss uh, right now, like I said to you as well, is that typically what we had is we actually had a router infrastructure with a serial connection to a PC, and on top of that we actually have PuTTY running. And whatever I input there on my keyboard will affect on the actual router itself. Um, now that's easy enough if you actually have two different devices, yeah, because you've got a physical cable in between. And what I want to do is I want to actually show you how we can set up this cable virtually. As simple as that. Okay, so there is of course two ways of doing this, um, as you would know. Um, I could use it, and if I do open uh, PuTTY, which I'll do right now, you'll see that my connection options are either raw, we're not going to worry about that, Telnet, R login, SSH, or serial. Uh, common ones used serial, and the serial would be used effectively for that piece of cable in between where we actually connect it to a COM port, right, and we connect it to a serial port on the other side. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, the second way we could do this is with some type of Telneting or SSH. Either one of these two uses something like an IP address. So what I could do in this case is I could actually assign an IP address. So let's connect it on the other side here. Uh, put another PC here, PC, and I could actually put an IP address of 10.1.1.0 down there, dot one, dot two. And if I did use now either SSH or Telnet, I could actually use that to connect to this router. Disadvantage of that, you need some initial configuration already. Okay, before you could do that. One of the disadvantages, the second disadvantage, of course, is what if I have multiple devices? It gets complicated. Okay, so that's what I want to show you. The next thing is, <clears throat> what we want to do, like I said, is create that serial connection, and we want to create it virtually. That's what this video is about. Yep. Okay, so let me show you why we want to do that, because if you think about it, this looks a lot like an actual party session, doesn't it? This is, of course, VMware Workstation. Um, it looks like a party session. There's a couple of differences here is I cannot select text right now. Okay. What happens is if you try and do that is you try and drag and select text here is you actually start to click into the program. Once you click into the program like I am right now, right, I am now connected, I then have mouse control. Uh, if you've done a bit of CLI in your life before and you've done some configurations, you know that that puts you in quite a tough position because we obviously want to select sometimes some text, copy it out into a notepad, uh, and we want to collect uh, collect some data from the notepad and copy it back into the actual router itself. This is my, my biggest frustration that I have right, with using Workstation at the moment. Even though it looks all the same, functionally it's not the same thing. Right, Putty. Okay, so what I want to do is 
I almost want to work outside of this infrastructure uh, with a PuTTY session and have all my capabilities of PuTTY. Yes, I know there's some additional tools we can add in here and so forth to get that session back and to get that function and feel back again. But we have PuTTY already, you know, or most of us. Why not use it? Okay, so whether you're connected to a physical router or you're connecting to a virtual router, that makes no difference. Right, so that's what I want to show you very quickly. There's a couple of setup steps for that to happen. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is I actually have to stop this VSR now. All right, it was previously uh, started. So let's stop it. And the reason I'm going to stop it is because I have to make some changes to this. The one way we have to set this up, remember we have to create a virtual serial interface. So if I edit the virtual machine and I see there's nothing in there, I've got memory, I've got processor, hard disk, network adapter. Um, if you want to do the out of band management, you can actually add another network adapter. I've got a USB controller and I've got display. So let's see, add at the moment. So what you can add is, wow, there it is, serial port. Yep. If you select serial port, you get three options. Option number one is a physical serial port on the host, which means my laptop needs a physical serial and I could connect to it. That's pretty cool. If you wanted to get the same feel, but I would need a second laptop. Not true. Because I would connect a laptop to my laptop, which is connected to the virtual router. Uh, yeah, that sounds cool. Anyway, it makes a laptop look like a router. Anyway, so the output to file, we don't want to output to file, or we've got something called output to name pipe. That's interesting. Okay, so if I select the output to name pipe, and I say next, well, it's going to create something like this, the named pipe. This is a virtual serial interface inside my laptop that I'm going to assign to the actual VM, right, to the specific VM for that specific device. So in this case, I'm going to assign a virtual COM port to it so that the outside in knows how to talk to it, right? And then there's a piped output, right? It's a way for the laptop to know how to talk to the actual VM or anything else to talk to the VM. So this COM port number is quite important. You can only have one, one at a specific time. Okay, well, what I'm trying to say is you can't have COM1, COM1, COM1 and start all three routers and expect to connect to them, all right, if they all have the same numbering. So typically what we do is we create COM port 1 for a specific device, COM port 2 for the next device, and so forth. I'll show you a bit of a best practice there with PuTTY, that I, at least that I use. This end is the server. The other end is not a virtual machine. It's actually an application. It's PuTTY. Okay, so we say finish. This time, it's there. And what I'm going to do right now is OK it, and I'm going to start this up. And while it starts up, I'm now going to go and... Look at, oh, wait, before we go there, I could want us to do this again. I'll tell you why this is important. Otherwise, we're going to have to come back for this. So what we want to do is you want to copy this name pipe. Otherwise, you have to remember it. Okay, so say OK there. I've now copied that. Right, Control C. That's in my clip, clipboard, of course. And I can then start this device up and start it. While it's going to start, I'm going to just move it out of the screen. And let's focus on Putty. Good. <clears throat> right, now we're going to say, well, what do we want to do with PuTTY? Right, what do we know about this? We know that this is a serial port that we're going to be setting up. Yep. Now, the serial typically will default to something called COM1. You know that you could change this to COM234, whatever the serial is physically connected to your laptop. But in this case, remember, we're not physically connecting to it. We're connecting a name pipe. That's going to be the same name. That's the important thing. Okay, I'm going to say, Tell a serial connection to a name pipe with the same number as my other device. And if I remember correctly, I just want to check. Yeah, that's called VSR underscore test underscore one. That's just a naming convention here. And you can see I've already got it there. All right. So what I also like to do is keyboard, control H it. Yeah, so we can actually use backspace there. And in this case, it should be all set up. All right. Good. Let me just quickly open up again my putty to show you. And let's see. Test. Loaded. There it is. All right. With all the information. And my keyboard should be Control H. And I can say open. But something's going to happen right now. Okay. I'm going to draw this in here. And I'm going to also pull this in here as well. Okay. Failed to download to us, config, okay. Good, you see that? Now suddenly, I am connected to the actual device itself. 
All right, so at the moment there is zero configuration on this. If I go Control D, there it is. All right, and Control break out of this. This is set up there. But wait, what's happened now? Something really interesting. Okay, just take note of that. What I tried to do was I tried to connect in, but it says login failure. What are we seeing on this side? TTY failed to log in from the auxiliary zero. There is, of course, from a virtual point of view, you have to set up something, right? So there, it's not it's not zero touch to, uh, uh, configuration. You have to do a little bit. So what is it complaining about? It's complaining about the actual auxiliary port. Okay, so let me show you. System line auxiliary zero and display this and there's no configuration there. Also be very careful of the fact that you can see, I'm just gonna break out so I can show you. That's user role is network operator. I have to specify authentication method and I have to specify a user role. If you leave it on user role network operator, it will allow you to connect to the device but won't give you functionality. Okay, so that's what you have to fix up. So line, oh sorry, I'm already in line there. Yep. Click into it. So I'm going to say authentication mode is going to be none for now. Right. I'm happy with that. And I'm also going to say operator. Sorry, the user operator. Uh, user role at the moment. What do we want to do? Well, if you look at the question marks, you can go up to level 15. Or you can actually do a network admin. Right. Network dash admin. And because if you do a display this now, you'll see that this looks a little bit messy because you've got the actual operator and admin. Right, I would suggest that you remove the user role network operator. Right, of course you can assign this to usernames as well. You know, people connecting to this. So you could actually have the triple A, the whole triple A function here as well. But for now, I just want to show you how the main pipe works. I'm not really that interested in the functionality of the Oxport. Okay, so we can say undo user role, role, and we said network operator. Yeah. Done, and if I do a display this now, you will see that I've got authentication mode none and user role network admin. Good. And strictly spoken, if everything works well, just have to log out to this one, it should be able to connect to it. All right, and if you do a system and you do a question mark, you've got all the configuration for yourself. Okay, so that's just a very quick video. And a little configuration, like I said, on the HP device itself, where you don't have to actually log into it. If you wanted to copy and paste something from this now, it's easy enough just to copy and paste. And that's the old putty that we know. And we are not restricted to this environment where we are stuck and we're not used to certain things. Okay, so yeah, effectively, that is the end of my video. I thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful. And of course, if you want to open up more than one putty session, remember the only thing you're going to do is change the actual name pipe from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Hope you found this video well helpful. And see you in the future. Bye bye.